Live from the Talking Joe studios, it's Talking Joe with Chief and Chris. Hey, 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 it's me, the Chief. I'm joined, as always, by my buddy, the exhausted Diagnostic 80 slash Chris McLeod. I've forgotten what my name is, so yeah. <laughs> well, you've had a busy week, my friend. Let me get, let me get my shiz out the way first, <laughs> and then we can it. come on to your far more interesting week. So, yeah. uh, what's up with the Chief? So basically, I've just been doing nothing much. Uh, the only thing of interest, really, is today and tomorrow, this being uh, Wednesday and Thursday, um, my work has hired out uh, a section of the Tottenham, uh, the new Tottenham Stadium, Tottenham Football nice. Stadium, for a two-day corporate event. And so, first day was today, and we had a little tour around the building, went into like, the dressing rooms and the tunnel, took some pictures of me out on the pitch, and I actually had the, for our American listeners, this is the newly revamped, what was White Hart Lane, the home of Tottenham Hotspurs, and is now rebuilt in the same location rebuilt from the ground up and it's actually got a retractable pitch and they actually had the nfl pitch on display when we were there because this is going to house two regular season games every year as well as wembley having two and um the the nfl astroturf pitch is kind of laid down at the bottom and then the football pitch the soccer pitch is on three retractable sections which come out above it and um but they had the nfl logo on there when we were there so um, I've got some pictures. I'll I'll splash those up on the social media. Did you not take any footies out there and like try and curl some into the up- <laughs> the upper nineties, as the Americans call it? I love that. Watching yeah. American uh, commentary of uh, soccer is uh, football is hilarious. Like yeah. you know, upper nineties, um, yeah. the semi-finals, uh, yep, the Premier yep. League, just to name yep. but a few. Yeah, they actually had the the NFL posts out. So I should have gone and tried to kick some 60 yarders um, as time expired, but um, I didn't get the opportunity. Uh, But there you go. So uh, apart from that, that, that's all I've been up to. But I want to hear about Joe Fest, which is what you've been up to. Well, it was a friggin' whirlwind, and I don't mean the G.I. Joe whirlwind. It was an absolute stonker of a show loved it it should be longer and it should be bigger in my opinion but i think it's it's one of those things it's it's growing it's gets you know the first year was last year and it was already too big for that venue so they got a bigger venue and they sold like two over two thousand tickets it was wow. it was crazy good for what you know for a joe show effectively it was brilliant we had so many of the gi joe community in a, in like their fans i should say but fan creators uh, you know, just people that have been there in official capacity in the past, you know, you've got all the artists. So just a quick run through and kind of like a mini shout outs. Adam Riches, Brian Shearer, Robert Atkins, Ron Rudat, Dan Klingon Smith Jr., Larry Hammer, just in the the artist area. Then you had uh, Sergeant Slaughter was there, which was unreal. I managed cool. to shake his hand, have a chat with him. I was dressed <laughs> as Lightfoot at the time, which he thought was adorable. But I also said to I called him Sergeant Slammer, which he he loved. He thought it was a hilarious <laughs> comment, and he also said he told me this little anecdote of um, when the, did you know that uh, me and Rowdy Roddy Piper were going to have a match? We were going to have a battle because he was going to be on the Cobra side and I was going to be on the Joe side, and then he went and died on me. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was just so it it was like a really adorable <laughs> sentence, but sad yeah. and cute at the yeah. same time. But you know, really nice guy. He said some again. He met my wife Kate uh, a different time to me, and she was dressed up as the Sarge, and they had a lovely little conversation as well. And he shook her hand and was really. Yeah, I think he called her the Sargette. I think he called. Her. I think that was his little nickname for her, Wicked. which was quite fun. But no, it was amazing. And then obviously the dealer floor had. You know, Roma Collectibles, Chris Neal, loads and loads of people were there. Um, Keone Young was there, Hank Garrett, all like, you know, kind of voice actors from the original Sumbo cartoon. And in fact, I was sitting next to Keone Young and he told me some lovely stories about him and Ian McShane, which was quite funny. So, okay. yeah, really nice guy. He'd, he's been in Deadwood as well. He's been in lots of different things, but he was the original Storm Shadow voice. Got it. So uh, that was always really cool. I mean, it was it was insane. There were loads and loads. But Joe Declassified were there. Jay Russell was there. I think Brian Kaufman, Raging Spoon. I mean, it was it was like the entire community. Uh, Bobby Valor and his Action Force Kickstarter. Uh, on top of that, we had the finest in some of the most incredible costumes I've ever seen. The Secto Viper from Ryan Meltzer was incredible. Like, just next level. If you've ever seen a Secto Viper, 
he nailed it like literally nailed it it's brilliant obviously you know uh, just being involved and finally getting in the finest with my light foot cosplay i was very happy with that that was wicked man i mean i i probably wasn't following it as close as i could i was <laughs> You know, just looking at pictures and stuff on the Twitter, I need to go back and do a, a proper trawl through. But yeah, your Lightfoot one was was really good. Thank really you impressed. so much. Really appreciate that. No, it was a it was a oh Tom Feister. I want to say Tom Feister before I forget. Yep. Uh, another great artist and a lovely guy. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, that the Lightfoot cosplay. Oh my god, that was a killer. That took me. Well, it, it over. I built the the robot with. I was building. Kate built the helmet ages ago. I yeah. made the helmet out, you know, just out of the, off the blue, and that kind of forced me to do the rest of the costume. So she did an amazing job on the helmet; like it's 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 next level. Like she's so talented. And then, so then, th- then I was basically tasked with the rest of it. So I built the basic kind of robot build, and then that didn't really go any further. I was kind of like, you know, doing very little little to it. And then it got to about a week beforehand, and I realised I hadn't built the mini um, unit, the kind of remote, the uh, mind um, mind detector unit. I hadn't okay. built the backpack. I'd only really done most of the stuff on the robot, and I hadn't even finished it. So I was like, "How am I going to be able to do this in a week?" Yet the answer is yes, I did, <laughs> and I'm very. I don't know how I did. There was a lot of sleepless, a lot of long nights, shall we say. But it came out amazing. I was really happy with it, and just the fact that it's got like a blooming like remote control droid is yeah, just brilliant. Sick. Anyway, amazing show. Loved every second of it. Ed Schumacher, who put it on, did an amazing job. There are there were some kind of there were some little speed bumps, and obviously one of the main issues was that it should be in a bigger venue, and it will be, I think, next year. Yeah. Uh, it's already outgrown that, and it should be another day. It's only a one day con that you right. kind of you spread it out with other things obviously but yeah it was great and loved every second of it so wicked, um, wicked. Sad, sad to be back next year i'll tell you what i'll start saving next year the chief will come out and we'll do a live talking joe pod oh, on the mate. show do it that is a great <laughs> idea great idea no well i just thought i just thought that then and now i'm actually thinking yeah should we do that maybe we do that <laughs> i'm down cool well cool. i'll be i'll I'm be down. there anyway so yeah <laughs> well i've got to be there now so that's it it's a done deal amazing oh and i should also say while we were there loads of people came up to me saying we love talking joes no one mentioned the full <laughs> force sorry the full force <laughs> it was all loving the talking joes really really enjoying it um you know really enjoyed it beforehand but that's because not it, you're not just stay, saying that to stoke our egos no that no, actually happened it actually happened they said they loved the show beforehand and they were a bit concerned when ben left but they have been they haven't been let down was that and that was the general Excellent. consensus so that they, they enjoyed the fact that i can bring something to the table i suppose but at the same time they really enjoy talking joes they've enjoyed it for many many months prior to me being involved in it um oh, and a number of guys came up to me yeah lo- loads of people and uh well i think four to be honest it was four yep. separate individual times this happened but to me that's quite quite considerable considering well, I was in the states, and so yeah. you, you know you got quite a decent following there. I think. Yeah. Well, thank thanks to all the people then that uh, you know came up to Chris and said hello, and all the people that perhaps um, didn't know he was there or, or support us and weren't at the show. But yeah, oh, oh, brilliant! Thanks for everyone. And on top of that, Chad Bowers, who gets a spe- super special shout out because we went out for a couple of meals together, and at no point did we con- talk about <laughs> what, what the logistics of the show. So. <laughs> right, okay. So yeah, yeah because um, I'm we're, we're hoping to get we're hoping to get Chad back on the show. He we we did an interview him with him some time ago, and we're gonna get him back on, and he's gonna actually do one of these little um, four issue read through recaps with us, isn't he? So yes, uh, that was your mission to uh, meet him and then organise that, and you failed, sir. Oh, but, massively, uh, massively fine. failed. That's fine. Special mission failed. <laughs> yeah, there's this thing called email. I think where we can still get hold of each other, etc. So. <laughs> Uh, no brilliant brilliant great recap and i think you're you're putting together some other stuff are you that uh, people can check out for little snippets about joe fest or yeah we're doing like a almost like a little interviews after the fact a little kind of wrap up joe fest much like we did with the joe cons of the past yeah um but we thought i thought it'd be nice just to get like everyone's individual kind of input so i've talked so far i've talked to paul pamphalone from pa- plastic battles who does amazing toy photography he is a genius lovely guy as well as that he does amazing graphic design uh, a brilliant dude and also pat stewart who is a full force presenter joe declassified yep 
just absolute. Oh, he does this articul- articulated points podcast as well. He's a genius, and Pat oh. Pat is the man when it comes to GI Joe. But anyway, yeah. so far I'll we've got those those, those guys, yeah. and we've got loads more coming. So yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. That sounds like a, a really positive way to open the show. So let's bring it back down a little bit as we go inside Chief's mind. Ah! Let's bring it down a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I tell you what, I I am, and it's difficult because I think everyone will will agree with me on this one. I'm not a massive dog fan. No, that's that's not what they're going to agree with me with. I was going to say, uh, but my my point. I'm I, I like dogs. I'm a I'm a I'm a dog fan. I like dogs. I don't think I'd ever own one because I just feel it'd be another thing I have to look after. Of course, yeah. But I, I enjoy other people's dogs. So what I don't enjoy, though, <laughs> is walking along the pavement and stepping in a big pile of dog crap. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Nothing worse than that at all. It's I, I find that abhorrent. I think that is a minority of owners who have no moralistic concern over cleaning up the, the, the dog crap a but, clear disregard um, for human society probably. yeah it's just and again like I say I think everyone would agree with me it's not nice to do that but it's you know I, I live in a world where I, I, I like to envision the owner of the crapping dog poo that hasn't been cleaned up he actually steps in maybe some elephant dung or something bigger <laughs> quicksand um, yeah dog- quick, <laughs> yeah, quicksand and just drowns quick so, is what yes. I think they should drown in, yeah. Yes, yes. And uh <laughs> that's bugging me because uh I I narrowly avoided some the other day and kind of like gave myself a you know, it was quick I was really quick witted. I was like snake eyes, man. I was nice. coming down the pavement, I, you know, I saw it last minute, did like a Back quick sort of side side step side step skip into a combat roll and avoided it and then um you know gave myself a little wink and a, and a nudge and then the next day uh, i actually stepped in a separate uh, a separate bit of dog poo that i hadn't seen and uh, that i had this vision good. of you doing like a commando roll to the side whipping out the katana out the back as you roll and yes. just slicing it in half yes as you well as the other the other the, the other vision was i thought you were going to say uh, you had a vision of me um, dodging it, doing a combat roll, and rolling into another pile, <laughs> which would have been even funnier. Yeah, yeah. As a dog but, owner, we take bags. We take numerous bags out with us when we take the dogs for walks. I wrap them. Yep. I tie them around the handle of the leash because I also keep them on a leash. What I've noticed in the states around here is that dogs just run around like f- all over the place. We have dogs okay. in all out, like, and they're not wild. They're owned, but they just. Sometimes they get out, and I'm like, "How are they getting out? Like, guys, this is dangerous. Like, for one, that it's a heavy traffic area around here. Like, there's a, there's a main right. road just up the just there. So, for them to just be running around, they could, I mean, I'm surprised more don't get run over, honestly. Yeah. But anyway, that's by the by, and that's yeah, inside yeah. Chris's mind as well. Yes, yes. <laughs> Cool, cool. Uh, we'll be going back inside my mind uh, next week, but right now we need to talk about some G.I. Joe comics. <laughs> yes, that's um, staying in. If, you, if you've done your homework, you'll know what issues we're talking about. If you haven't, doesn't matter because we'll recap them for you anyway because that is the purpose of this part of the show. Exactly. So the first issue we're going to cover is G.I. Joe Special Missions number 16, and this is from December. December 1988. Script by Larry Harmer, pencils by Herb Trimpe, Andy Mazinski's on inks, Phil Felix is on letters, and Neil Yomtov is on colours. Cover, my friend, what are you saying here? Interesting. I, because again, this is like something that happens but doesn't happen, if that makes sense. I mean, it does happen in the show, but I'm confused as to who the characters are in the cockpit. It happens in the issue, not the show. Sorry, why do I say I'm, I'm exhausted? Because you're tired. You're I'm tired. exhausted. You're a tired man. So yeah, and it's, plus I think it's because I was singing the theme tune. So all of a sudden <laughs> we're, we're talking about cartoons. I'm guessing it's Ace, and I don't know. So I'm just having so much confusion as to who these people are. Yeah, it's two people effectively in. You can't even see what vehicle it is. I guess the tail fin at the angle suggests a Sky Striker, maybe. No possibly no, even the that conquest. doesn't have that that's the conquest has the two doesn't it yeah and they're in a very close up if you haven't got the cover to hand they're close up and then there's what looks like a night raven that <laughs> we're str- we're, already we've hit uh we've, we've hit, hit a brick wall we've hit the brick wall i think you're right i think it is a night raven i think it has yeah. to be because it's only a night raven a rattler and a stiletto stiletto that go up 
So yeah. yeah, it has to be a night raven. Basically, it's a it's a depiction of a aerial combat seen that the thing now is, though, the more i look at it the more i'm not so keen on it I, no I, I like the the cover itself but because it, i'm confused i because I, I had to i did this i read ahead in the issue obviously i've had to read the issue but when i look at who's involved in the air battle it is literally the ghost the the uh, x19 which is like doing its recon uh elsewhere ace is in the sky striker with someone else in the in the cockpit and i think it's lift ticket if i'm yep. not mistaken yes it's lift ticket and but that leaves Slipstream on his own in the X thirty Conquest. So I look at the front cover and I'm like, is that supposed to be Lift Ticket and Ace? Because if it is, it's the poorest rendition of those two characters I've ever seen. Yeah, I think the situation here is you've got the issues drawn by Trimpe and the cover's actually done by Ron Wagner. Okay. So and again, the he, cover he, he's is just awesome. Given a brief, yeah, he's just been given a brief, hasn't he? Of, uh, of you know, Joe Joe characters in a in a plane being attacked. So. So that that's anyway. the only disconnect for me. It's a great cover, but it doesn't depict what's going on inside. Yeah. Next. And and the <laughs> next the um so the basic synopsis here is there's a there's a Joe team that have been doing some aerial recon over Cobra Island. They've spotted something they think is looking a bit fishy, and so they send out a they, they're, sorry, it's the, the the satellites have been taking the imagery. So yeah. now they send out a, a team like you mentioned to do some recon, and then Cobra send up some people. And there's a firefight, and this actually uh, is a pre prelude, if you will, to issue 81 of American Real American Hero, which we read several pods ago, <laughs> and where I said, wait a minute, where did this big ship of, of Cobra um, civilians and vehicles come from? And this is from this issue. So we should have read this one first. My mistake. It's all good. It's all good. It, did we just uh, think still, of it as a still, flashback? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, What's, what's your overall thoughts on this? Then we can dig into some bits that you like, bits that you, you know. I think it's uh, it's okay. It's an okay issue. I, I wouldn't say it's, like, mind-blowing. I think the better aerial combat was done in a previous special mission yeah. and and in, and in actual fact in a couple of the regular like uh, issues yeah. as well. Um, I think the three, just to break in, I think uh, the one we did last week was the or the week before, I think, where the Maverick yeah. gets into the biplane. I think that was a better aerial one. Obviously, issue 34, uh, Shakedown. Yeah. And I really like that special missions one, Showdown, where the Night Raven ends up in the drink. Yeah, big time. But I think all, all three of those do aerial combat better. Yeah, I agree. There's some really nice... Again, it's not difficult to follow. It's intre- It's fun. You see the, the battle looks great, and it's interesting. And I love. I really love some aspects of like when... The, uh, the the wing dips in the water from the rattler. I like how it breaks up. I like how it just, as in reality, it would have just, it just be, you know, it would tear itself apart doing that as it hits the water like a brick wall. So yeah, I, think I that... thought I thought most of the most of the Cobra vehicles seemed a bit flimsy. Yes. I mean, I know I know what you're saying. Wingtip hits it and it breaks up, but it kind of breaks up in in, se- in almost in sections, like and, it's a uh, toy. As if it was a snap together kit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a Gundam kit. But yeah. I know I, I do like the visual of it. I think that there's a lot, there's a there's a real exaggeration when it comes to the car the comics. Sorry, I said cartoon. When it comes to comics drawing, this I'm not mansplaining this to you, Chief. I know you know this. This yep. is just me, uh, take you know, saying it out loud. Yeah, uh, for myself really, that they over exaggerate, they over egg the pudding in some aspects to, to make it more dramatic and and more you know intense and everything. And I think that's an exactly. What's happening there is exactly one of those uh, examples of that. It's like, yeah. whoa, look at it just <laughs> obliterate as it hits the water. <laughs> I'll tell you what the scene I did like, actually, is early on, the Joes are kind of in there, um, in the day room, it is, at the, the pit. Yes. And all the pilots are together, yes. and they're kind of just relaxing. I think I'm looking at the so- uh, on the sofa, you've got Ace and Lift Ticket. I believe I so, watching yeah. TV. Yeah. Slipstreams, looks like he's playing solitaire <laughs> on his own. Um, and then Wild Bill and Ghost Rider are playing table tennis, and there's someone else well, actually, in the corner there. Go- it's Maverick and Maverick and sorry, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, Maverick. Yes, oh, and Ghost Rider's playing darts. That's sorry. Correct, yeah. And then you get that kind of similar scene when you cut a few pages later to the the Cobras, and they're on Cobra Island, and they're also in in a, in the rec room uh, playing pinball or you know drinking Cobra, Cobra Cola. Co- Cobra Cola. <laughs> One of the guys in the foreground, I didn't notice till now, is drinking it. He's got an expression on his face like, what is this garbage exactly. I'm drinking? Do you know what? They missed the trick here. They should have called it called it Cobra Co-La. And then you've got the Cobra La 
thing going on. Nice. Mr. Trick. <laughs> Maybe you should write to Larry and tell him. Larry hates Cobra Lyre. That's probably why uh, okay. he didn't do that. <laughs> it might have even been Trimpe who, who did that. I don't know. I don't know in Larry's scripts whether he would have put draw a vending machine with Cobra Cola on it or mm. whether. I don't know. Um, it's, but it's yeah, cool, I, I kind of like. Kind of like those, you know, the little bit of dichotomy there. But um, what are you? What's your thoughts overall on the subplot that runs through most of the, every issue he's in of no one remembering Ghost Rider's name? Are you a fan of that or not? I I think it, to me it gets a little bit overdone. Um, yep. to, if I'm being super critical, I don't mind it. Like it's, it, I always kind of, I don't really like. It's like one of those things where at first it was like, oh, that's cute. But I didn't like, you know, I wasn't lolling all over the place. But yep. then when when you kind of keep coming up to it, I'm not frustrated at all in any case. It just doesn't really have much of an effect. Um, so it's it's kind of almost like a non-feeling now with it. Um, okay. I think it's it's a cute... I mean, it has to kind of keep happening because it has to be the character. I think every now and again they should remember his name and then they get cut off, you know, something along those lines to make it a little bit more realistic. But other yeah, than that, I yeah. think, uh, yeah, it doesn't bother me too much. Quick, quick question here for you. I like the bit where in the Cobra's rec room, the Strato Vipers are having some beef with the Star Viper about <laughs> yeah. effectively who's better. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Strato Viper was the figure, I'm talking toys now, that came with the Night Raven. Correct, yes. Uh, but the Star Viper never had a figure or did? No, the Star Viper had a figure. Uh, oh, it did? Yeah. There, yeah, was yeah. there a stiletto vehicle then? Yes, there was, was, yeah. Oh, okay, right. Okay. Stella Stiletto, Star Viper, yep, yeah, all that. All and that jazz. In, in kind of, back to the comics now, the Star Viper, at this point in time, are we led to believe that there was only ever one created? Well, that, that's the are thing. We, are we thinking that there's multiple stilettos with multiple Star Viper pilots? So I think, I, I'd, I'd have to double check this, but I think in the bio it's always uh, written in kind of like a generic way. So it's like the Star Vipers are created with this kind Got of it. technology. So you, you're led to believe there's more than one. Okay. What they did, probably did, what Larry probably did in the comics, because he was doing both. He was doing bios and comics at the time. Yep. I'm not, I'd, I'd have to double check. In fact, while we're here, let me just double check that so I can actually give out the right information. This isn't just to make yeah. me sound like I know what I'm talking about. This is cool. This is in, in like probably important. Cool bit here actually. While you're looking that up, the stiletto and the star viper have kind of circled back round to the C130 to take out Wild Bill, who have on board that is Lady J and Mainframe, who are doing some. Uh, they're blocking the Cobra Island radar stuff. There's a cool bit where she. She cracks open one of the windows on the on the C one thirty and basically no. just M sixties, M sixteens, the the uh, canopy of the Star Viper. I thought that was hardcore. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So Star Viper. Yep. There is basically a Star, and again it is written in that generic sense. So he wrote it as a Star Viper is a qualified Cobra Strato Viper with an electromagnetic shunt surgically implanted in the right side of his brain. During high speed upper atmospheric dogfights, electronic impulses are introduced through the shunt, stimulating the reflexes while heightening awareness for split second decisions. Star Vipers are exceedingly dangerous in action. They routinely execute fast maneuvers with insect-like efficiency. However, they are referred to as jolt heads by their fellow Cobra and are known to be distracted and generally disoriented between missions. So I think the the bio was written in a more generic sense, so there's going to be more yeah. of them, probably to sell the toy. Yeah. I don't know if Larry did write that. The, the fact that they reference jolt heads sounds like a Larry thing to do, but usually yeah. he's, very, he's a lot more... I don't know, descriptive, and lo- there's loads more kind of technical aspects in there, so I'm, I'm not sure if he did write it. Now, I, we know he wrote the comic, so my th- my thought process is that he didn't want there to be loads because he might not have liked it that much. That sounds perfect, and all the references in the comic suggest that he's he's just a one-of-one, one. and until I see multiple stilettos on the same page comic wise that's what we all believe as well. <laughs> and he gets a jolt because he's in some tight turning circle thing with um ghost rider and ghost rider basically makes him overload his systems and there's a cool panel where he goes snap pop crackle i suppose you know what you're doing jim it's okay i've been training them <laughs> kellogg's rice krispies it's the way kellogg's toast them get on with it that's terrific beats are singing 
Brilliant, which is uh, a, a nice, nice, cute little bit there. Yeah. System overload, system overload. And, yeah, uh, I love he's that. Down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so goes goes right. It has passed out a little bit, doesn't he, during that whole thing? But then yeah. it's it, you, like you can pass out to a degree and still be with it a little bit. But if he overloads his systems, then he's going to like pop and fizzle and explode. So yeah, yeah. that that was that was kind of cool. And I do like the... that. I like I like him as a character, and I always think that he's he's had some very cool scenes in the comics, hasn't he? Yes, definitely, definitely. You know, he was the like one of the instigators of the uh, Cobra Civil War. Obviously, he brings the black box back, and they mentioned that he didn't. He's jealous because he didn't. Or he's he's, he's b- off because he didn't get a parade, etc. But um... oh, I'm thinking of Ghost Rider. Sorry, not oh, uh, sorry, Star Viper. Ah, there you go. Yeah, but he, yeah, they both have good bits. They both have good bits. In fact, Star Viper doing that whole infiltration thing was brilliant. That was a really cool issue, actually. Yeah. So yeah, and then we get the wrap up. The, the little as we get in a lot of one off stories, the wrap up comes in effectively one or two pages, and this is where we actually find out what they were. Uh, the beginning of the issue where the Joes looked, they were they saw Cobra were transporting something that looked suspicious, and it was actually furniture etc and things that were loaded onto this ship along with the the cobra civilians that were t- were taken to uh what would be brocker beach yeah the old kind of like misdirection maneuver isn't it yes yes what's your yo joeage on this one fun issue uh lots going on it's still linked in quite heavily with previous storyline and arc it doesn't funnily enough i'm not sure how you feel about this but to me it doesn't feel like a special mission. It feels like just a regular issue that could have locked in with the with the rest of you know the run that relates to it. Yep, so um, for me, I don't really hold it in high regard as a special mission. But as a regular issue, I would I, you know I think it's really cool. I think with the special missions, you have to really minimise that team. I think you have to. It, you know, and yes, there. I mean, it was a lot of the aerial guys. Fair enough. Um, and you've got a lot of them all battling in dogfight. But I kind of feel like, in that sense, it has to be focused on one person. You know, you have to see like, go, it has to be focused on Ghost Rider. Or it has to be focused on Ace. That's just for me when it comes to like a special mission type issue. I feel yep. like it's a great opportunity to delve into that. So I'm going to say, sorry to kind of drag this out, I'm going to give it a six as a special mission, but a seven as a regular issue. Okay. So I'm just going to give it six and a half. Okay. I agree with pretty much most of all you've said there. Um, I'm actually going to give it a six as an overall issue. I enjoyed it. There are other issues, both regular series and special missions, that I would dive to uh, more frequently if I want a one-off. Uh, it didn't do anything wrong, but there was nothing that really popped or uh, was outstanding that yeah. made me want to read it again or, or give it more plaudits. So, right, cool. Let's move on to Real American Hero. Here we start with number 86. This is called Not Fade Away. This is Larry Harmer's on script, Marshall Rogers on pencils, Randy Emberlin inks, Rick Parker on letters, Bob Shireen on colours. And Cover. this is... This is a yeah twenty fifth anniversary is sprawled across the front to let us know this is the anniversary of GI Joe. Uh, I like this cover a lot. Yeah, it's really cool, and you've got the you know it's like the hidden thing in there is that it's GI Joe on the you know it's the original GI Joe there. So it's be you know the the interest is peaked, isn't it there straight away? Plus, it's got yep. some cool characters: Shockwave, Muskrat, Stalker, Hawk. Brilliant. Yeah, and he you know he is he's kind of silhouetted there with his back to the to the reader. You don't recognise me, do you? I'm just another guy named Joe, <laughs> which is uh, cool. I like that. I like that. It's amazing that just recently we had the 50th anniversary, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Madness. We've got a few characters in here that we haven't seen before, namely Shockwave, I guess. Just one character. We've seen Muskrat before, haven't we? Yeah. But I'm just looking at next week we're going to be reading Special Mission 17. And I think that actually, that's from January 89, and that actually introduces Shockwave. Okay, yeah, I was going to say. Is, this yeah. is April 89. So again, we've gone a little bit out of time sequence here um, because Shockwave will have been introduced in a special missions prior to this issue. But um, I think this is probably his second appearance anyway. So cool. that's fine. So what's happening here? This is basically, there's a, a building. I forget what the building is, but it's got a big military laser in it. It's the Empire State Building, mate. It's the well. There you go. Yeah. Why did I not know that? High atop a famed New York City landmark. It okay, says. Yeah. Yes. Empire State Building. Um, very first page is quality. Uh, Iron Grenadier is launching some rocket at a tomahawk, and this is basically um, there's some um, 
people doing some work with lasers, etc. You find out who they are later. Uh, they need some help. GI Joes are on the scene to to help them out, and the Cobras there trying to steal stuff. <laughs> as always, yeah. As always, yeah. Dressed yeah. as Iron Grenadiers. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yes. So this is, I guess, pay- this is payback, isn't it? Because previously we'd seen Iron Grenadiers dressed as Cobras. Yeah. And here in, we in get the, the light reverse. Foot, in the Lightfoot Repeater Budo issue. And now go. we've got Lightfoot and Repeater coming back as well for this particular issue. So they've been involved. Lightfoot and Repeater have been involved in both. Both scams. Both scams by, yeah, Mars and Cobra. And Marshall Rogers, I'm going to say straight off the bat, uh, Marshall Rogers does a good job here. Because I know we've been up and down on his art in the issues he's been been doing. But um, I think he does a good job. I agree. I think Some of the faces, yeah, I know I was just I, about I'm, to I'm, say. I'm with you on... His downfall in on these Joe issues has always been his depiction of of some of the the faces, especially the close up stuff. And again, I think that is still evident here. Yeah, all the action stuff is really good, beautiful, but... some absolutely beautiful shots. Like, how about that scene with the Televiper, Toxo Viper, and the Viper with the backpacks on the helicopter backpacks, just kind of all yes. flying. I mean, there's some beautiful scenes and and in illustration in this. But yeah, the the faces kind of turn it into like almost like a parody comic do you know what i mean it's it's quite dis it's quite disjointed yep yep agree with you there agree with you there shockwave fan just out of interest massive shockwave fan he is another one of those kind of figures that you come out and you see on the shelves and you're just blown away by how bloody cool he looks so he's swat team all right or correct yeah especially x swat team no he's he's gi joe special weapons and tactics so he's gi joe swat there's a few of them there's wide scope and lamont there's there's more. Uh, I don't know the, who either of those two are, but you'll educate oh, me wi- at some wide point. Sc- wide Scope and Lamont are like a mid two thousands kind of uh, character okay. that came out. Yeah, very similar looking. And these one's a dog. Yep. So. Okay. <laughs> right. All uh, right. They're a tag team. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Joseph Joseph come onto the, onto the Empire State Building. Uh, there's a guy called Joe Colton who's uh, head of security in the building, and he's uh, working on a rapid pulse electron beam. Um, yeah, which... very very similar to what we've seen in uh, in not too distant future with that um, harp uh, thing that was in Resolute. If you've seen G.I. Joe Resolute, which is kind of like yep. a short form cartoon that was on uh, in bursts, and then they put it together as like a big feature. Yeah. Um, the there's this thing. Yeah, that they called it the harp, didn't they? Where they had like those satellites up in the um, kind of covering the Earth. And then, like, energy would be beamed up and then it would kind of return back with, like, force and on whatever they wanted to fire it at. So this is kind of what's happening in a much kind of more manageable style. <laughs> yeah. I love the fact that, yeah, it's so accurate as well to, like, within inches. It's it's kind of cool. Yeah, they can bounce it off some, you know, like, satellites uh, in geosynchronous orbit or something like that, um, positioned around... Or in the atmosphere, it's the ultimate Star Wars defense system. Yeah, and I guess Star Wars was probably, which was what was a Reagan initiative, wasn't it back yeah. in the day? Yeah, I guess that was still around this time. So, and and then oh, quality bit here on the next page. Uh, you get your. I, I always like it when the bad guys are dressed in their long trench coats, their shades, and their trilbies. <laughs> yes, it's a favorite of mine. We've had so many trilby wearing shades, guys, haven't we? In these uh, yeah. in these comics. You can yep. see there's a really good panel that I like m- m- for many reasons, but one of them it shows you some details on Lightfoot's helmet. Um, so he's got his back to the to the to the reader again, and you can kind of see all the kind of the bo- they've they've he's gone really close with the action figure, so he probably had that as reference at the time, I would imagine. Yes. Yep. But it's nice yep. to see again. It's nice to see a lot of Lightfoot. I think he's one of those characters that doesn't really get a lot of shine, but he's been in uh, since I've said that, and since I've joined Talking Joe. He's been in like about four issues. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. He was in that special missions. Obviously, we had his introduction issue. We got this one. He was and in he's the other special lot. mission with his introduction. Yeah, with, with Mangler yeah. dying. Yeah, that's totally. it. Yeah. yeah, he's getting quite a lot of page time. And yeah, I, I like it. I, you know, I, he was I neither here nor there for me originally, but now on this reread, I'm actually thinking this guy's pretty cool. Actually, yeah, I just love his bonkers uniform. It's, yeah. it's insane. I like quite like the the mystery aspect of this issue. You know the. The Iron Grenadiers at the beginning, which obviously we find out later, and then aren't Iron Grenadiers. And then there's, you know, the mystery person who's pulling the strings behind the scene, who obviously gets revealed later. But it's, you know, it's got a nice kind of uh, mystery element to it. And it's not just a straight shootout, all the action scenes. You know, there's little traps and detonations and and just, you know, they've got to get 
it worked their way how to get out of scenarios. Yeah, yeah, it's is, really cool. Which is pretty cool. And you also get the reveal at the end of G.I. Joe and G.I. Jane, which is a nice touch for the 25th yeah. anniversary. And they've, again, that has that has kind of um, kind of popped up again in recent issues of comics, you know, G.I. Joe and G.I. Jane in the Empire State Building, running okay. that laser system. That has, that has kind of stayed throughout Larry's um, kind of writing through a real American hero, even to this day. So, yeah, they come My up kids. again. Yeah. We find out later that uh, Firefly... Um, was one of the one of the people described dis- disguised as an iron grenadier and there's some techno vipers and like you say toxo vipers and stuff people crashing in through windows repeater it's a good page of repeater just letting loose of course mind benders in it of course he is yeah why wouldn't he be he's in every single issue behind <laughs> every, everything um i would like to know what character is in the most issues and i would hazard a guess that dr mindbender will be up there and then obviously like you said when you know as you've mentioned there once it's revealed that it's not iron grenadiers it's actually cobra troops then you get the reveal that the the mystery person pulling the strings which you're you're kind of led to believe at the beginning is clearly destro because it's his troops but then obviously it's not it's fred seven and mindbender and they've hatched this plan to release a drone and catch or no what what's in the what's what's the thing they've actually stolen some sort of disc some floppy discs fireflies put in the floppy discs on a put in a bag on a pole yeah and this drone comes collects it and the only way now they've got to effectively destroy this this not evidence but this this bit of technology is to use this laser beam uh, that can like you said can pinpoint like uh, a needle in a haystack as it were yeah um which they do, and they destroy it, and everyone's happy. Well, Yay. except Cobra. Apart from Mindbender and uh, Cobra yeah. Commander and the Cobra he'd, a- he'd actually ordered champagne, and it was literally about to come in through his window, and then you see uh, it's tinkle, 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 uh, as the bits just fall down in front of his face. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a tricky one here, because it's a fast-flowing issue. There's loads going on. There's loads to take in, new characters, Action's really good. Uh, the twists and turns were really good. Most of the art was good, but how much do I mark it down for the the, the face thing? I don't know. I'm going to give it a seven. I think I was. All, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to give it a seven as well. There's more to it that I'm interested in with with this than the previous issue, so I have to, in that sense, kind of bump it up to seven. But yeah, I think. I mean, the faces aren't that bad. It's no, just no, that I don't want to over. Yeah, I don't want to over egg the pudding by saying that they're bad. They're actually not bad, but it's just you know, once you've had a steady supply of Ron Wagner and Rod Wiggum, um, <laughs> you get used to a you know a standard, if you will. Once you have wag, <laughs> you never go bag. Back. <laughs> no, I don't know. I was going to say that as well, and then stopped. Yes. But yeah. Yes, you made the wise decision. We're both sevens. We're both sevens. Um, right, moving on. Moving on. Issue eighty-seven: Assault on Castle Destro. Assault and Pepper. Oh, Assault and Pepper for Destro. This is uh, Larry Armour script. Tony Salmon's pencils. Randy Emberlin inks. Uh, Rick Parker letters. Bob Shearin colours. This is from June nineteen eighty-nine. The cover. Mm, not sure. Destro's pulling a weird face. I don't want to make it all about faces this week. It's a bit basic for the uh, for the face there. There needs to be more detail on the cover, I think. What's what's that thing called he's flying? The Despoiler, is it? The Despoiler. I don't know. I don't know. So there's the Despoiler that he flies, the AGPs which are in the background, and the anti-gravity pods, and then the other vehicle is the Demon, isn't it? That big what's sodding a, thing. What's a nullifier then? Nullifier's a driver. Ah, uh, okay, yes. Of the demon. The demon. Yep. thing I do like about this uh, cover image is I like on the front, he's he's put a nice decal of his <laughs> his name uh, with his face and a kind of a it's dagger. A dagger through it, yeah. Going brilliant. through it, nice. So no one... Oh, look, let's jump in this. Oh, no, it belongs to Destro. And there's also uh, <laughs> down the side by his controller, it says danger. Danger. Mm. Um, danger of what, I don't know, but I like that. But yeah, the cover the cover's not the best. Classic toy reference being utilised there. No, I, I agree. Yeah. I think it could have been really spectacular, and it's it's you know it's all right. But yeah, it, you're right. It could be way more spectacular if you're talking about like a fleet of Iron Grenadiers and Destro. It's like that could be brilliant. The the basic premise of this issue is Destro is at his home castle, uh, which is in Scotland, and it's just a big kind of firefight between between him and Cobra forces. 
And I all... love I love the fact that on this Larry went ahead and utilized the not slang terminology, but Baroness says caravan park instead of trailer park, and they do the kind of you know it's like he he put it in there because he knew that that's what we call it in this country, and obviously they're in Scotland. Yep. The Baroness wouldn't necessarily say caravan park. She may say trailer park, but I, I like the fact that he's done that for the, you know, to, to kind of basically implant, to plant us in Scotland, you know? Yep, yep. And like you say, there's a there's there's a, a trailer park and it is housing the Bracco Brothers uh, Circus for one group of travellers, if you will, um, which obviously we know Bracco is a anagram of Cobra. How many have we seen? Was Arbco? Yeah. Cobar, Broca, Bro- Broca, Broca, yeah, um, Braco. Sorry, there's there's loads. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it. Yeah, beginning of the issue, he's doing a flyover. You know, just kind of scouting the area. And your man's back, sneak peek. I know you like a bit of sneaky peeky. I love a bit of sneak peek. He's with Flint, one of my faves. And who else is with them? Outback, possibly. Oh, and yeah. Shockwave again. Yeah, yeah, it's out. Yeah, Outback and Shockwave. They're in the Swamp Masher, which is one of my all-time hilariously favourite vehicles. It's just so ridiculous. Nobody beats G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe Swamp Master. There's Storm Shadow and Shockwave. Swamp Master's ready for some cobra chasing, ripping through the swamp with cannon blazing. And nobody beats G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Swamp Master, cobra amp and figure sold separately. Joe, Joe. Is there a designated driver for that, or it's whoever wants to get behind the wheel? You're correct. It's whoever wants okay. to get behind it. Whoever doesn't want to drive it this week, basically. But yeah, what I found about this issue, actually, and I have to mention it, is some of the art is so weird. Like, it's disproportionate, it's a bit odd. There's a panel where some guy is yelling at two brats who are snooping around, and you'll, if you come here again, you'll be in a world of hurt. And it's the weirdest shaped human being I've ever seen in my life. Tell me that yeah. isn't the oddest... Like the jacket's massive. Yeah, he looks like he's he's either got an he's been basically doing way too many um, bicep curls slash uh, shoulder press on his left arm only. Yeah, uh, and he's just got a gigantic left shoulder, or he's 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 bought a jacket which is XXXXL, and he's actually a medium, and it's flapping um, in the wing. Yeah, yeah, that happens quite a bit throughout this issue. There's some weird like Outback's crouching down looks like it's so weird. The camos coloured really oddly just straight lines across his uh, trousers and yeah his, the hair looks weird I, I don't there's I, I i find i found a lot of odd art choices in this and then yeah you see the maggot coming out of the back of one of the vehic- one of the uh, caravans yeah and it looks f- gorgeous like it's twisted where you got yep. the two set the separation of the vehicles and it i think that looks beautiful but then like you go down one panel and outback's bending over and it looks like cindy lauper yeah. With a, like some really weird eighties exercise pants on, it's yeah. really weird. Yeah. And that first page is really good as well, quite dynamic. With yeah, the guys flying in. Yeah, Tony Sammons, I guess, catches a lot of flack um, for probably, like you said, his inconsistency as was one of the things. I yeah. am a fan of his stuff. Not not a massive fan, but I think I, for me, the good outweighs the bad, and it's definitely a stylistic. I agree choice about whether you're into it or not when it's good it's great and it's majoritively yeah. great it's just there's some one a couple aspects you just look at it and you go really that yeah. seems out you see of you see voltar early on here who is he i don't know anything about him apart from his brief appearances in the comics he's destro's general he's the iron grenadiers kind of like you know when when destro isn't there he leads the he leads the front for the iron Got grenadiers it. okay all right cool that's that's enough um, <laughs> the, they're, they're drinking the Cobra Cola again, which is obviously we saw in that special missions. Cobras, because Shockwave catches one of the cans out of the air, boink, um, <laughs> to basically the reveal that these these gypsy travellers are not gypsy travellers; they're actually Cobras in disguise. And why? I read this about five or six days ago. Why are Cobra attacking Destro in the castle? Has this been long, long-term build-up from uh, Cobra Civil War, and obviously the last, the, the you know, co- trying to pretend to be Cobra and and exacting kind of like terrorist and situations? Also, and I've just seen the page here where he's speaking to who else uh, but Mindbender, Fred Seven, that is speaking to Mindbender, and he slams his fist down onto 
the table and he says, I'll teach Destro not to cut into Cobra's armaments business. There you go. So it's, there you go. Doesn't like to share that piece of the pie. Whack. Um, yeah, cool scenes here with the, the Iron Grenadiers letting off the mortars. Yeah, that's uh, cool. The maggots firing. Like you say, you know, it's, I think the problem with the art is I don't want to look at a, an amazing panel and then the very next one is just like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Yeah. I mean, um, it doesn't happen often. I mean, it is a bloody good, you know, he, he does some beautiful things. But then every, the, the, when it's really bad, it's terrible. Yeah. And then when it's when it's good, it's absolutely sensational. So, but like, again, it's doesn't, it's not taking me out of it at all. Yeah. It's, I'm still enjoying, I, I still enjoy the issue. I love who's, how cool they made the Swamp Masher look in that one panel at yeah. the bottom when it's zipping out of the uh, I'm, camouflage. I'm, I'm literally on the same page as you. How, how coincident, coincidental is that? That's a great, <laughs> that's a great panel. And uh, who's the guy? Who's that? Is that the maggot driver? The the Cobra Trooper? Worms, they're called. Worms. Love that face mask. It's great, isn't it? Looks good. Looks good. Never never had those. You see, the toy looks very Rocketeer. They've gone. A, they've kind of gone a little bit of they've avoided okay. that a little bit with that particular uh, viewpoint of him in the comic. I like the and they're, they're your look. nullifiers, mate, as well. The nullifiers are in there now. Can I tell you a little anecdote about the nullifiers? No. Yes, of course you can. So they were going to be basically Cobra La drivers. Oh, is this them? I see them with the with the purple face. Yeah, yeah. Ah, so okay. th- there was a thing called the Insector Cycle, which was uh, prototype. Well, not prototyped. I think it was uh, concepted. Yep. And you get the it's it, there's there's pictures of it. I'll send you the uh, the image if I can find it. It's very it should be easy to find. And basically, it was like a Cobra La motor so, motorbike. Yep. Uh, like a recon sled, but in Cobra La style, so very, very cool and like shell like and, and and creepy. And the nullifiers were going to be the drivers for it, but then at the last moment, they were just basically the the figures were kind of pro, the, were manufactured uh, and they just flipped them over to Destro's Iron Grenadiers instead. So that's why, yeah, that's what that's all about. Cool. No, that's good. Didn't know that. Um, always helpful. And in that page, on that page, this is another one. It's, I love it. I love the way Larry writes a story because he wraps it all up in two pages yet again. And it's another one of those uh, scenes which we saw at the end of Cobra Island, the Cobra Civil War, where it all wraps up in a couple of pages where everyone, it's Sepentor's dead, and then Mindbender and all his troops just rush back to Cobra Commander like a sort of toady lackey and patch things up. And here, the same kind of thing happens. Destro confronts Fred Seven, tells him he knows his secret. Next page, they're buddies, they're arm in arms. G.I. Joe can go home. We're kind of joining forces, so to speak. And then it actually happens in another issue. I think even the very next issue we're going to review, the same similar thing happens. Two fact- two sides at-, at war with each other, and the conclusion is, oh, no, you know, let's just join up again. <laughs> yeah. Um, it seems to be a common theme. But I tell you what, I did, the bit I me- meant to mention is when Destro does confront Fred Seven, he pulls a gun and it definitely looks like Han Solo's blaster. Yeah, big time. Do you know you know that Han Solo's blaster was utilised in the Palatoy Action Force line as well, don't you? I do now. It was. I think it was Baron Ironblood gets it sometimes in a carded figure. But it, yeah, there, there was so many moments when Palatoy Star Wars accessories would be utilised with Action Force Palatoy carded stuff because they would just be grabbing stuff and throwing it in a lot of the time that's interesting there's a lot of crossover with um a lot of crossover with star wars and action force because of the uh, i suppose relationship they had with palatoy at the time interesting interesting i'll tell you more next episode yes do do <laughs> and then um it, it wraps up because all the troopers are happy because yeah more benefits <laughs> I love um, because of some this this arms deal they're going to make and then the joe's kind of just get to go home good issue good issue i like it outback is finally drawn like half decent in the bottom panel yeah, as well yeah as well so yeah awesome um, <laughs> no it is it is and yeah it's a quick quickie it's actually one that i remember i remember reading this and thinking that it was longer thinking that it was maybe like part of a longer arc because you it's surprising that a siege can last for an issue and yeah. be finished and wrapped up right at the end like it i yeah but I, I kind of felt like it could have had more and I wouldn't have been upset if there was a little bit more about yep. it, you know? Yep. I think I am going to give it a seven, uh, but I'm going to put it above the previous issue. I think I, it's a seven that I liked a bit more than the previous seven. Cool. I'm also going to give it a seven too and in a very similar fashion. I'm not just copying you. 
I agree with you, but you know, I'm, I'm not... well. I'm right most of the time, so it's no crime to agree with me. <laughs> um, right, moving on. Uh, issue eighty-eight. This is called Python Patrol. This is who have we got here? We've got Larry Harmer's on script as always. Tony Sammons is on pencils again. Randy Emelin inks. Bob Shereen colours and Rick Parker letters. And the cover, nice cover. It's got uh, GI Joe versus Python Patrol as a logo and then you've got four joes lined up on the left with four cobras on the right although one of the characters we have not seen before and on my cover he's drawn with a a pinkish flesh color what is in coloring error i guess yeah what is interesting about this cover to me is the fact that one we're dealing with python patrol being kind of touted here which is the new you know the new uh decoed bad guys team toys and all that kind of stuff uh, where they redecoed uh, like Televiper, Crimson Guard, Cobra Officer, etc., etc., etc. Oh, they were actually toys. I didn't realize that. Yeah, there's a whole like there's you know Copperhead and um, th- there's a ton, and they're, they're, I've got them on card and they're gorgeous. But so uh, you know they all get this kind of crazy color scheme kind of thing going on, and yet the cover doesn't depict any Python Patrol. I just no. find that really mental. So you've got Destro. You've got a blue Cobra Commander. Now that that actual deco did come out um, at some point in the future, like later on. But in terms of this, he should be silver. Dark on your right is um, is is coloured wrong. Like there's like a bit exposed, which is wrong. Uh, and then you've got Doctor Mindbender at the end. So none of none of which really have got anything to do with Python Patrol. So I, that that really confused me. And then I think you've got. You've got Snake Eyes, Scarlet, Flint, and Jay. I think that's the uh, four Joes yeah. on that side. But anyway, that was just my again, like being a bit confused about. You've got a, you've got an issue here with Python Patrol, but you're not actually putting any of them on the cover. Seems yeah. weird. And this is again um, Ron Wagner's on the on the cover. Um, you know the, the actual artwork is really good for this cover, but yep. like you say, not representative necessarily of what's inside. Yeah, agreed. So what's going on here? The Joes are their military advisors here to the country of uh, Wolken Cook Cookland. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, Wolken Cookland. Yeah, Wolken Cookland. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so which, difficult. Which is on the border of uh, Darklonia. Cookland. Yes, sorry. Yes, it's on the border of Darklonia, which is. Um, uh, I don't know what position Darklon holds within that country destro just made him like you know he owns it effectively president for life or something like that yeah yeah and they're related oh what destro and darklon correct yes okay cousins or something or second cousins i think they're cousins um i will just double check again bear with me keep talking and this is this is uh like an east we're, we're, we're presumably in eastern europe somewhere yes okay cool and yeah the joes are military advisors and quite a lot of humour in this one. There's a nice scene early on where Cobra vehicles are kind of on sale. <laughs> yeah. You've got, well, you've got a Stinger, you've got a Firebat and an Asp. I can't think what that thing's called. With the one wheel at the front, two at the back. Stun. Stun, that's it. Yeah, you've got the Cobra Stun, Asp, Firebat, Stinger. Oh, the Conquest, Conquest there as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And these guys, you've got... What's the uh, what's the guy they're advising called? Uh, General Udakrantz, I think. Your guess is as good as mine, but yes, yeah. I think it General is. General Udakrantz and his lackey Wolfgang. And you can tell from early on that um, Wolfgang is going to be up to shenanigans or up to no good. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so the, the Cobras are developing this Python... Obviously, as the title suggests, Python Patrol, this kind of Pythonized uh, camo, which is supposed to be invisible to... Is you know radar detection. Yeah, which is a good. That was cool from Larry's point of view because obviously Hasbro would have just decoed these guys up, called them Python Patrol, and then it's like Larry, you, you've got to you've got to come up with what this is all about. <laughs> yeah, Darklon. By the way, Darklon is a distant cousin of the Destro clan and a last okay. of a long line of privateers, mercenaries, and investment bankers. There you go, uh, merchant banker, more like. Um, so on, so the, the the Joes are advising. And they've got manoeuvres, they've got vehicles, they're manoeuvring. Here on page, I don't know if you've got the same page number as me, page eight, there's a couple of maulers coming over the hill. And what's that other thing on the left? Is that the slam? What's no. That coming over the hill? Is it a slam? No, it's not. It is. What? It is. Oh, it is a slam. Yes. I thought the slam, I didn't, is the, has the slam got wheels? I thought it was a stationary thing. Well, that's why it's being dragged by the by the truck like because it can't oh, it's been dragged it's... the other way i see the maulers are coming towards us and this truck thing is pulling the slam the other way sounds like it yeah or looks like it i think okay all right cool because that is just effectively like a, a stationary uh gun turret 
Am I right? Yeah, it's got like the, the, those little legs come out, don't they, and lock into place. And then you've got that kind of. I, I'm not sure. Did yours have the like little melted? One of the cannons is like melted on the end no, because of the heat. Never, never had it. Okay, then yeah. I had very few vehicles in my deprived childhood. Oh, that's really sad. No, I had a lot of. I had a lot of early stuff from like series one or two or whatever. But after that, didn't really get much vehicles. Ben had most of the vehicles that. When I would go around his house and we would he'd play with them, and I had most actually, he had more figures and more vehicles, but anyway, yeah. So, Wolfgang, little dirty, <laughs> uh, he's been turning off the alarm, turning off the uh detection alarm and letting smugglers over the border. Hole. Yes, yes, I'm just getting uh, more swear words in. Yeah, do it. And wait a minute, wait a minute, I've just turned the page. Mindbender, what is this get up he's in? He's got some kind of backpack that's. Obviously, you've got this python paint in it, and he's well. I suppose it's his usual outfit, just sands the cloak, and he's replaced that with this with this backpack. He's still got his massive cod piece on, of course, and he's got his big, big thing which is dripping stuff out the end. That is a um, hideous drawing, in my opinion. Like that is like some '90s superhero panel right there, where it's yeah. like completely out of proportion and weird, and it's got yeah stuff dripping on it usually. Yeah, that's not ideal. Um, uh, meanwhile, uh, like you said, the people from the... Well, not like you said at all. Like I'm saying right now, uh, Snake, Eyes, <laughs> Snake Eyes, Scarlet, Flint and Lady J, they're in a Camaro or Camaro. I don't know how I'm supposed a to pronounce com- that. A Camaro, as they there say out here, yeah. Um, <laughs> and what are they actually... Do- I can't think what their mission is. They're just tooling around in the Walker Cuckland bars trying to find out something about smuggling don't know uh but anyway they they, they're just sniffing around this they cross the border um then it gets it's a cool bit here where they they because they got across the border without the alarm going off there's some uh postulation that it's the shape of the camaro which is uh radar uh non-detectable yeah but it wasn't is because wolfgang had shut off the alarm anyway and then you've got vipers coming across the border, blah, 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 more stuns coming across. Roadblock then rumbles Wolfgang and he's counting his money. Uh, we get found out that, you know, he has been helping the smugglers through. There's a big firefight, blah, blah, That's blah. Really blah. Awesome. That's a really good firefight, actually, where Roadblock and Hawk are shooting. A bit more twisty vehicle drawings I there. I love that. I mean, th- this is something we may talk about a little bit long a little bit later on in the show but the oh. desert the desert fox that skidmark uh, yes. slash treadmark is uh is utilizing skidmark yeah. of course in the G.I. Joe comics yeah good 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 battle scenes here good chase scenes they fall into a trap where the maulers have been waiting maulers and the slam have been waiting for them but they get taken out then the uh, the conquest comes in cobras scuttle away like the dogs they are dark Lon escapes um gets captured by snake eyes is it ever really explained? I suppose it doesn't need to be so much in the comic because it's done, maybe it's not even done on the file card, but Dark Lon's look and yeah. the fact that he's another one, he's wearing a cod piece. They love cod pieces in G.I. They Joe. Just, they, you know, they've got to protect their, their family jewels, haven't they? I assume his skin isn't yellow. No, and no, And this, all... this is some kind of, of costume. Uh, costume. What's the purpose of his mask? It's not. It's not. It's not for a medical condition. No, there's no okay. purpose with with Darklon. It's just. I think they were when they were designing him. They were doing someone related to Destro and wanted to do the kind of carry on that mask tradition in a sense. Got it. Yeah, he's bonkers. He's absolutely yeah. bonkers design, and I love yeah. it. Yeah, but at the end there, you know, you think, okay, we've captured the bad guy, blah blah blah. But then uh, uh, Erdekrantz comes in and basically wants to cut a deal with Darklon. And he says, let's talk turkey, volume, price, and delivery rates, uh, delivery dates. I'm sure we can work out something equitable. And, uh, yeah, so the Joes are left once again kind of holding their tadgers as <laughs> the bad guys. How many times does it end with the Joes as middlemen, apparently? Like, yeah. it just it, that's It's like Cobra do something, they're fighting someone else. By the end of it, they cut their losses, and the Joes are kind of like, "Well, what, what the hell?" Like, it's yeah. just it, it's crazy how many times that happens. Yeah, yeah. And then Darklon and Destro are kind of saluting each other to our our profitable partnership, and then yeah, Cobra uh, Fred Seven wants to do some smuggling, etc. Get back across the border, and the smugglers will only do it if they happen to have a Camaro. <laughs> um, nice. Dun, 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 that's the end. So yeah, it's kind of a you know 
I don't know if this this Python stuff comes up again. I can't recall. It does. Oh, it does. Okay, yeah. so it's a one and done, but with re- repercussions. Well, the Python Patrol are in another issue, but that's I, I don't know how many more off the top of my head. I'm not sure how many more it is. The it's funny how Tiger Force was the same thing. So Tiger Force only has one, I think, special mission. Okay, um, and it's we'll get to it eventually. And it's one of it's one of my favorites because it's Tiger Force. Yep. But it's so like you know done and dusted, and then that's it. It's over. Uh, and I've also got some cool little in, like insight into some of the things that they do in the issue as well, which uh, will be interesting when we get to it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. What what's your uh, yo joage on this one? Python Patrol. It's probably six because uh, it's okay, but the best part about it really does make a difference to me. Like it, the uh, de- use of the Desert Fox. Uh, but other than that, I mean, you know, it's. I don't know. You hardly really see the Python Patrol that much. In it's, I'd ra- I'd like to see Copperhead, the Crimson Guards, the Cobra Trooper. Um, yep. the, you know, all of those. In- instead, we get the Viper and we get you know a couple of the vehicles and stuff. So, I would like to see. You know, I, I would have liked to see more more consideration towards fitting them into the the storyline in a more ongoing fashion. Because yep. yes, they're around for a short period of time as toys, but I still think you could kind of keep that going for an arc for like, you know, like five or six issues. Keep them as Python Patrol and then maybe something happens and they change it out again. But I, um, yeah, I, I just wish they'd kept that more prevalent. Yep, yep. All makes sense. I'm actually going to give it a seven. I enjoyed it. I think I would rather read it again than that first special missions we read. Um, and it'll probably slot into the middle of the other two sevens that I have reread in this part of this uh, group of issues coolsies that being said we've now covered the comics section of the show but that comics. means we do need to uh, talk about some toys which brings us on to chris talks toys dun, dun, dun. Chris, chris talks, talks toys. toys yeah <laughs> that's not the lyrics no. <laughs> so I am looking at. I am looking at the. Uh, I don't know why I've turned into that, uh, that guy. <laughs> Almost C three PO ish. I have turned into. Um, okay, so the Desert Fox six wheel drive is what I'm looking at, as uh, and also the vehicle driver that, that comes with it. Now, there's a lot to really kind of get into here. One, when I was a child, I had this vehicle, uh, the GI Joe, the Action Force version. So you get the box, G.I. Joe the Action Force on it, um, and it is a beautiful art. Uh, it's got, um, I think, you've got the driver. Now, the driver for us in the UK was called Treadmark from the off. Um, and on the box art, he's driving the vehicle from uh, le- as you look at it from left to right. Uh, in the passenger seat, you've got Spearhead firing his, his, right, his massive machine gun out the right-hand side. And on the back gun turret, you've got repeater, like, letting loose. A missile firing as well on one of the sides. It's a very dramatic and very awesome-looking card art, or box art, I should say. Uh, And it's awesome. Now, on the UK version, you have a picture of, like, a photo uh, of Treadmark, like, kind of in, like, a fake uh, cutout, if you know what I mean. So it would be, like... You know, as if, you know, in, in a lot of the vehicles, you'd have like a, a bit cut out and you can see the figure that yep. you're getting with the vehicle. In this sense, it was just they did a fake version and they put a picture on it. On the US version, the G.I. Joe uh, Real American Hero box box art is exactly the same, except they have they have the character shown, or the figure shown through a kind of window box. So, you know, same same card art, more or less. Still got G.I. Joe decals because it's G.I. Joe the Action Force because we've switched over now from Action Force uh, to G.I. Joe the Action Force. And that is basically all you need to know about that. Now, in the Nordic countries, there uh, there was an Action Force boxed version of this. So it does say Action Force on the box. And the card art is amazing. It is basically a simplified version of what uh, is on the other two box arts. The missiles are for firmly in place, and not and none of them are firing. Spearhead now doesn't have his rifle in his hand; he just has a fist, 
and Red Dog is on the back, and you can tell that there's a difference in art quality here. The Red Dog does look a little bit like the Fun School kind of artwork, okay. and he's plonked on the back, not firing the gun either, so no one is firing anything. The reason for this is, obviously in the kind of Nordic areas, they had issues with showing gun violence and just that kind of some weapons and stuff on their cards. So a lot of the figures had repurposed card art where they didn't hold their weapons, they didn't fire their weapons. They A lot of them would just have fists up and they'd have like night creepers with their swords kind of stored away on their backs or, you know, like dreadnoughts without any weapons in their hands or just to the side. It happened again with uh, European Tiger Force exclusives because it was a European exclusive shared uh, kind of situation. Uh, a lot of the later releases had to have the, the kind of weapons removed or placed in non-threatening scenarios, okay. uh, which is quite an interesting thing. But that's what happened on the box art for this. And but funnily enough, they call him Skidmark in the um, in the Nordic countries, which is interesting. So obviously, we had a problem with Skidmark as a, yeah. I suppose, like a slang term for you know when you <laughs> pants. So they didn't really want to kind of put that as a character name and obviously it has both connotations it could mean like skid marks that you leave uh you know in a vi- it, originally it was just because you know cars would leave skid marks when they wheel spun away or whatever or skidded <laughs> they would yeah. leave marks yes uh now but one of the things I, I i have to talk about on this is i absolutely love this vehicle so much now this is a tan relatively like overall like a light tan vehicle with brown kind of roll bar kind of elements orange missiles uh or it's kind of like it's softer orange it's not bright orange and uh orange turret with a brown gun gray wheels uh and gray interior so there's like a very cool color scheme it looks awesome it's got six wheels two like four at the back two at the front and it's kind of very like uh, original looking it's got a lot of space for for figures obviously you've got the passenger seat you've got the driver's seat you've got the turret you've got stations either side of the turret so you've got lots of space to put figures it was basically kind of took over from my awe striker which was my favorite kind of ground-based vehicle as a kid and then this came out and i was like oh my god this is amazing i love it the treadmark I always loved as a figure as well. I thought it was a really cool design, zany color scheme, and that was that was definitely played down in the comics. And the, the comic we were just looking at, his color scheme is definitely muted compared right. to the one that came out. Now, so obviously with differences in the name, they have certain differences in terms of the cards. Now, in both instances, he's from California and he's called Cyril Columbani. And obviously they had to change the name because of that issue. But they also change uh, some other elements like the kind of what he is underneath his card. So on the card it it states on the US card that he's a G.I. Joe Desert Fox six-wheel drive driver. Lots of text on that one. Now on the UK card or European or, you know, I suppose it was the UK one. Uh, he's just down as the Desert Fox driver because we just don't want, you know we don't want to get into the, all the details right there, and everything else. I think the I don't think there are any other massive changes other than maybe the odd spelling difference, but for the most part that's the differences between the two. Now I love Treadmark as a kid. I thought he was brilliant, and I think having him called Treadmark and not Skidmark was a massive reason for that. Right. And he's often looked down on by a lot of the kind of US collectors because of that silly name. Um, And in actual fact, what is even more interesting is that the FSS modern version that came out only just, I think, last year, maybe earlier this year, that version is called Treadmark. And that's really because of the, uh, the trademark of the name more so than anything else. The trademark. Brilliant. (laughs) So the trademark changed it to Treadmark, which is incredibly ironic. Now, because he's known as Treadmark on the FSS version, I was basically saying, oh, it's got to be, it's a UK homage then. And that that was also probably p***ing a lot of people off. But I was saying it, and that's what I think. So the modern version, I think, is an homage to the UK version. Right. And Adam Riches did the artwork, good friend of mine, love Adam. And he did a really cool uh, rendition of the single-carded figure of him with his foot up on the back of the desert six-wheel drive vehicle, just kind of like tucked behind you know the actual bubble so you can't really see a lot of it but the actual card art is really cool 
Uh, and my last little thing I want to talk about with this is that Guy Cassidy, who is another friend of mine and another legend in the Hasbro design era, uh, he designed this this vehicle. Um, and one of oh, many wow. amazing things that he designed, the Persuader X30 Conquest. I talked about him before on the show, I think probably in the last show, and um, the Rolling Thunder. And but this this vehicle is just one of, up there was one of my favourites, and he did the design for it. And again, being one of my heroes and someone that I know now is kind of weird. You know, I've grown up yeah. with this with this toy line as a kid, and then I meet Guy, who is in amazing shape for his age, and kind of think he's he doesn't he, he feels like my age, like he's so he's so bloody fit the, <laughs> but um yeah he. Again, love him and his wife Maria. Love those guys, and we'll, hopefully we'll get to see them very soon. But uh, yeah, an amazing man, and he did some great work on on the show. So yeah, desert the Desert Fox six wheel drive and Treadmark slash Skidmark are my toys. Chris talks toys this week. Excellent, as always, informative uh, for me. Hopefully, also for the listeners. Yeah, good stuff. And uh, I tell you what, I like about that is you know because my experience or or knowledge of GI Joe is pretty much ninety percent coming from the comics, and a lot of these. Uh, vehicles and and characters are not necessarily featuring every issue or only getting a few pages it's it's difficult to kind of get invested in some of them you know yeah. and you kind of giving me this uh i'm saying you giving me personally giving you know giving i'm taking on this backstory and and finding out more about how this character came about and the designs and stuff is kind of you know really making me appreciate them more and you know enjoying their appearances more so uh awesome. so thank you from me i want to give a couple of shout outs uh quickly to people who have contacted the show over the last few weeks going back the last sort of three or four weeks so uh smudger 2017 sam myers james buford stephen jubber uh brent mcmillan thanks all for your messages your kind words etc ah stephen jubber that's um yeah. gi joeberg isn't it yes yes good shout out to, shout out to steve uh great you know great great show we're in we're in rarefied company obviously you've been doing joe related pods for a lot longer than me and it's uh you know it's a niche subject area and there's for such a small niche subject area there's so many good quality pods out there and so you know any any appreciation we get from other other people who are are part of other shows is for me personally who i'm not been doing this for long is really appreciated and and quite humbling um shout out to uh, my buddy G Force Gareth Williams, who has been listening to to the show from the beginning, he is absolutely not a GI Joe fan. Uh, he just listens to the first segments and the last segments, skips all the GI Joe stuff in the middle, but he loves it. <laughs> and he's been away for a while, but he's recently come back and caught up on all the episodes, the non GI Joe bits. Uh, so, so welcome back, G Force Cavball Customs, who is uh, he sent a message saying on Instagram saying that he met you at Joe Fest um, and said what a nice guy you were. Oh, uh, which was which was likewise, nice. likewise. Uh, l- love all his stuff on Instagram. Go check out Cavball Customs; um, does great stuff. But yeah, hopefully we've got some more shout outs next week. If you want to get in touch with us? You can do so in the usual places: Talking Joe Comics uh, at gmail dot com, Talking Joe Comics on Instagram. Talking underscore Joe on Twitter and Talking Joe, a GI Joe podcast on the Facebook. Do you not have a question for me than this one? Yes, I do. I'd completely forgotten. Uh, Let me just do this last little bit and then I will come back to the section of the show that I had forgotten. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Next week, if people want to read along and do the homework, you can do that by reading issues 89, 90, 91 of Real American Hero and Special Mission 17 which we'll re- we will recap in all their glory next week. And about this time, I would like to uh, ask you a question. So it's time for Chief Bass Chris a question. Chief Bass Chris a question. What'll he say? What'll he do when Chief Bass Chris a question? What is your favourite colour lightsaber? Oh, that's a good question. I Can I have my own colour or does it have to be existing? You do can you know have, what I mean? Pick, pick an existing and then pick one you'd like to see. I guess. I've always I've always thought um, Mace Windu's was uh, quite cute because it kind of stood out from the crowd. Yep. Um, but I'm such a non fan of the prequels. Like I find them really really <laughs> sometimes. Like the obviously like the uh, Phantom Menace, the Darth Maul elements really cool. But other than that, I really struggle with the with the prequels. As most do, rightfully yeah. so, I believe. Totally. Uh, I think if we're going classic, 
I do like to be beside the seaside. <laughs> I do like the green. I do like Luke's green lightsaber. But okay. um, if we're talking, if I had a lightsaber, if I was a Jedi, and now my wedding ring, I'll send you a picture of it, yep. does have the Jedi symbol on it. Wicked. So, so I, I'm very invested in the Jedi religion. Um, so, <laughs> so I would, I would Weirdo. love to have. I, well, yeah, I know, I'm a d- but I, um, I love the thought of having because I, I'm my, one of my favorite colors is maroon slash burgundy slash that color. Okay. So I'd love to have like a like basically it's it's almost red, but it isn't. So it would be kind, kind of, of like deeper, on, darker red. Yeah. So kind of like I'd be on the fence with the Sith, but I'd be I'd be that Jedi, much like um. Quinlan Voss or Cade Skywalker or yep. any one of those from the expanded universe that kind of they could do something and could be on either side. You know what I mean? They really, yep. they really, uh, yeah. There was a fine line they walked. Shall I, shall I say? Okay. No, good. Acceptable. Acceptable answer. Ding. Passed. Yes. I'll have another question for Chris next week, and if you cannot wait, then that's tough because it will only happen next week. Uh, what no, about you? I know you, I don't ask you a question on this, but I would like to know what your favourite colour lightsaber is. I kind of like just the the stark white with a tiny <sighs> tinge of blue. I think. Ooh. I think. Nice. Um, nice. I don't know, but uh, yeah, because I guess in the movies, um, there's probably <laughs> only. I don't know why I said it like that. There's probably only four <laughs> colours, is there, maybe? I don't know. Green, red, blue, Mace Windu. <laughs> yeah, I think there's only four, possibly. I don't think there's even different shades of those colours. But, um, mm. yeah, I like, I, like what, I like what you're saying, actually, with the, with the kind of the, the maroony colour. I don't know if in the expanded universe... There's I mean, that black one in the expanded universe, like the black light, which is quite cool, which is like, um, they do it by... Is that what think, one of the Mandalorians has? Yeah, it's like a, it's like almost like a, it's almost like the, they do like a white core, and then they do the black around it to kind of make yeah, it... Yeah, that actually, does look you know, good. So they can actually do it, but it looks really neat, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Yes, so, as, as I said, uh, before I forgot that I had to ask Chris a question, do the reading if you want to next week, 89, 90, 91, plus special mission 17... Uh, if you like the show, you want to leave us a comment or give us a rating on the iTunes, you can do that. We'll be uh, appreciative. If you want to get in touch with us, you can do that. But with all that done and said, or said and done, in fact, uh, we will see you down the road. Bye. Bye.